Hi, it's Lori from LoriStory.com. This video is the second in a series of Cricut Explorer basic tutorials designed to introduce you to the Cricut Explorer and the Design Space software. In this video, we will be exploring editing images, which includes copy, paste, weld, slice, changing colors, color sync, resizing layers, and the contour button. Okay, we're ready to start editing images. Now to do this, we're going to go back to our Cricut library, and if you remember where we left off in the lesson one, we go to insert images to go to our Cricut library. And we're going to pick this flower that's right in the second row. I have all images and it's the flower in the second row. So we're going to click it, get the green check mark, insert image. Let's make it a little bit bigger by dragging on a corner point. That will keep it in proportion. Speaking of which, if you grab on just this handle, it rotates it. Undo. If you grab on this point, it will make it longer, but it will not make it fatter or wider. Undo. If you grab on the side points, you can stretch it sideways. Undo. But if you want to keep it in proportion, you want to grab the corner and pull. Okay, and if you remember from our last video, we could also go to the edit menu. And say we know when we are finished with this project, we want this flower to be three inches tall. So we would just type in three. And we know it's going to stay in proportion because the lock is on. We hit three enter. Okay. And again, as I mentioned in the last video, you want to make sure you do any resizing before you break this apart, ungroup it, so that all your pieces will be sized accordingly. So what do we know when we look at this? If we look over in our layers panel, these are all blue, so we know it's grouped together. We see that this eye has been turned off, so there's a layer there that we can't see. So let's turn the eye on. Let's go over here and let's right click and ungroup. What that allows us to do is pull the image apart. We have the top layer and we know it's the top. It's right here on the top of our stack. Underneath that is the brown layer. We have the green layer and then we have the shadow layer. Okay, so Let's say that we don't want a face on our flower. We just want it to be a solid flower. So what we can do is we can click on this one, which has the holes cut out for the eyes and the mouth. And we come over here to our layers panel, and there's this button called Contour. We're going to click on that. And what this does is give us a chance to say, hey, I don't want this eye cut out, I don't want this cut out, and I don't want this cut out. Well, to do that, all you do is click on it and you'll see it kind of highlight and you click on it it will change colors that's no longer going to be cut that's no longer going to be cut that's no longer going to be cut now let's click off of it and now we have a solid flower so if we put this back together it no longer has the face to it so that is what the contour button is. If you have shape or cutouts within a shape, you can go in there and turn those off. Now the next thing we can do is what if, I'm going to put this over here, what if I wanted to have three flowers and I wanted them all stuck together to cut out as one piece? I can do that. I'm going to select this flower, I'm going to copy, paste, and I'm going to paste one more time. So let's line these up, and I want them to slightly overlap. And there's some overlapping right there. Make this one overlap right there. Okay. So now what I can do is select all three flowers and we can go over to the layers panel and now we have some more options and we can hit weld and now you see this is one piece 
Now let's undo that. Undo. Okay, so now we're back to three separate flowers. Let's get rid of this one. Let's get rid of this one. Another feature we can do, say I just want this green stem. I don't want the flower at all. What I can do is go in to my images and grab a rectangle. Let's just put rectangle in. And I'm just going to grab this first one. And I'm going to put it right over this flower. And I'm going to, actually I'm going to put it over the top of the flower. And remember I told you you need to do it this way. Okay, so we have the rectangle over our flower. Now we're going to select the rectangle by clicking on it. We're going to select the stem by holding our shift key and clicking on the stem. And now we're going to go over here to the slice tool and watch what happens. We've sliced. So what that did, anywhere that the lines intersected became a cut line. Look, we have our original flower, we have just the petal, and we have the outside or the negative space. Let's delete that. Now if we wanted just the stem, let's go back. I'm just hitting undo and going back. Say we want just the stem. Let's move the rectangle here. Let's select them both. You can click on the petal or the flower, you can click on the rectangle, or you can just drag a box around them. And again, let's hit slice. Anywhere the two lines intersected became a cut line. So now we have a stem, we have the negative space, and we have our flower. So that's what the slice tool does. And I'm going to undo so we can get our original flower back. And you can do that with any image. Okay, the next thing I want to cover is this color sync button. What does this do? What this does is say you have your, oh, here's your flower, here's your middle piece, and this is your top piece and you can see these have been moved around because we've been playing with them so let's bring this one to the front and then we'll bring this one to the front which we'll put it on top okay so we have this piece and this one actually goes under that piece and that was the eyes and the mouth if you remember before we cut the holes out what if we want to use this as an extra layer on top let's bring that one more layer front Okay, we can, we want it to be the same color as this. We just want it to add dimension. It's slightly smaller than that layer and we just want to add some dimension. It has the cutouts for the cute little eyes and the mouth. And we just want to use that uh, as an extra piece on top. But we want it to be the exact same color as this one. So if we go over here to our color sync button, we can click on it, and now it's telling us, okay, you've got a brown layer, you've got a green layer, you've got a gray layer, you've got a purple, and you've got a pink. So if we want to have this brown layer be the same color as this purple layer, so all we have to do is grab this brown layer and pull it down to the purple. So now both of these pieces are purple, and we could put some foam dots under that and pop that up and have another layer. So what the color sync button does is change an existing layer to a color of another layer that you already have. The next thing we're going to do is, I'm going to move these out of the way, we're going to edit text. So if we want to put text in, if you're doing a card or you want to cut out some letters for a title, let's just put in hello. So you click on your text button, oops, and you type your sentiment. And there we have it. 
Let's move this out of the way and move this over here. So we have our text. Now if we want to edit text, we again use the edit window, but it, now there has been two more box or a few more options added to the edit box. We have a place to select our font. By the way, you can use any font that's on your computer. It will show up here. We have a type of font. We can go in here and select bold or bold italic, ones that write that you can use um, the Cricut pens with. We can set the points, which is how big the font is. We can set the letter spacing, which is how close together each letter is. We can set the line spacing. So if we had three lines of text, we could set how close together those are. We can say we want the sentiment hello to be four inches wide. So we will go over here, click on the width and put four inches. Make sure the lock is on so that it retains its proportions. Hit enter and now it is four inches wide. We can rotate it just like before. And we can line it up with the X and Y axis. We can also mirror it. So let's look at the fonts up here. We also have this little drop down that says all fonts. You can change it to all fonts, which is all the Cricut fonts, all your system fonts, the ones that are already on your computer. You can change it to just the ones that are on your computer, that's system fonts. You can change it to just Cricut fonts, single layer fonts, and by that, it means it doesn't have come in with a shadow layer or has a writing style which means you can use your Cricut pens to uh, write the font. So let's leave it at all fonts. We can go over here and choose as I said before the regular bold, bold italic, writing, writing italic. Let's leave it on regular and let's just look at all fonts. And I have a lot of fonts on my computer so it's thinking a minute. Okay, so here are all my fonts. If I want to change this while this is selected, I can just select it and it will change the font. And again, some fonts are not included in my subscription and these are Cricut fonts, so if I want to use those, it's just telling me how much they're going to be. So I'm going to use the Cake Basics font. Now when you look at the Cake Basics font, you can see, again, if we look over in our layers panel, these are blue, there's a layer turned off, so we know that this comes with a shadow layer, which is super handy when you're doing layered font titles. So let's turn this on. And now you see you have two layers. What do we have to do to split those? Click on it, right click, ungroup. And now we have the shadow layer and we have the gray layer. Now what if we wanted to change colors? And you can do this and we want to use a color that's not already used so we're not going to use color sync. If you just want to change the color of a layer you just double click on it and this brings up another option. And in this layer we can just click on a color. Uh, if we don't see a color we like up here we can go down here and click anywhere. We can move this slider for different shades. And I'm just going to go with this one and say I want the hello. I kind of like the gray and the green. Now let's change. Um, we can change that to, let's do the pink. Okay, so now we have a green shadow layer and a pink top layer. Now, what other options are in the text edit color window? We can tell Design Space that we want these letters cut out. We want the Explorer to write them. We want the Explorer to just score it. Or we want it to print. And we'll get in, I'll do another video on the print and cut. But for now, we're going to keep it at cut. So let's go back to our layers window. What do we see over here? We have our gray layer. We have our green layer. It is cut. This one's tough to cut. We have our rectangle. 
This one is set to cut. You can tell by the scissors. We have our flower layer and it is set to cut. We have our layer we're going to stack on top. It's also set to cut. We have our stem just set to cut and we have our shadow layer which is set to cut. So now that we have all these layers going on we want to keep all these layers they're all turned on this is our project this is what we want to cut we hit go and just like before it's going to think about where the items need to be on the mat how many mats we need how many colors we need and the best way to cut them out now good point here you see it took the biggest letters it spaced this in order to save the most paper but what if we want our title we don't want it to cut out like that we want it to just cut straight so let's close that let's go back to our hello and we have the gray layer and we have the green layer when you want something to cut out exactly like it is and you don't want you know to cut an O here and an L here and then cut an E and then cut an H you want it to look just like this you want it to say hello when it's done and you don't want to have to realign it what you can do is select it and then we go back over here to our layers panel and we have this option called attach and when you click on that what that has done is attached all these letters together so that when you cut it it's now going to cut out just like that so let's do the same thing to the gray layer let's select it and let's click attach okay now let's look at what it does when we hit go this time now it kept the letters exactly the way we had them set up so here is our green layer it's telling us our first mat will have the hello and remember I've told you in this at this point we can move this around if we want to use this corner of our mat we can next we have the stem layer we can again move it around on our mat wherever we want and this is a way to utilize all those other corners of your mat instead of always using the upper left we have our gray layer and the hello is still in the correct order since we've attached it and we have our two purple and we have our two purple flower tops and if you look here it says number of mats six we're only seeing four so we know if we click this button there's two more there is our shadow layer of our stem and there's our pink rectangle Again, if we were going to mirror, if we were going to be putting this on a t-shirt or something, we could check this box and hit mirror image. So everything is where we want it. We can hit go. And now what's going to happen is it's communicating with my Explorer, making sure it's turned on and everything's ready to go. It's telling me my very first mat is going to be the green one. And so what will happen is I will load the green paper on my mat and if I'm just using a scrap piece of paper I want to make sure that where my cutting area is is where the paper is. We're going to load it and then it's going to tell us to set and then go and then it's going to go to the next mat. And it's going to walk you through all three steps every time. So that concludes editing images. We covered the contour button, we covered attach, we covered weld, we covered slice, we covered editing text, we color covered the color sync button, and we also covered how to change the color of a layer. So I hope you found this video helpful. In our next video we're going to be working with the upload image which is where we bring in third-party images thanks for watching the video be sure and stop by our Facebook group called I love my cricket I L U V my cricket and if you like this video give me a thumbs up thanks